Hi, I'm Mike. We have now started up haying on the ranch, producing the bales that'll feed our herd for the long, sometimes hard winter. Today, we get a look at the first part of the haying process as we get to farming and cutting grass on our Wyoming Life. Welcome back to our Wyoming Life, a continuing video series of mine, my wife's, and our family's life on a Wyoming ranch. We invite you to tune in three times per week and join us as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Ranching for us is all about family and care of that family. But our family extends well beyond that that just lives in our house. We consider the entire ranch as part of our family and the things that come from it. The cows are certainly a big part of it. Pigs, chickens, gardens, even the grass that grows here. But along with all that, we also include those families that the ranch provides for. Those that purchase beef produced here. The customers that come to farmer's market and enjoy Aaron's produce, her eggs, or even those of you that watch what we do. Whether you're trying to get a better grasp on what goes into agriculture or you work in the industry yourself, maybe you're against raising animals to feed the population and you want to educate yourself on the what, the how, and the why things happen on a ranch or farm. That's totally fine. You're all part of our family and we're happy to call you that. As with any family, one of the big days of the week, whether you hate it or not, is the day that you have to go to the grocery store and fill up your fridge or your pantry. And for a major part of the family here on the ranch, that's the cows, this is the time of year that we start to fill up their pantry. All summer long, the cows are gonna enjoy fresh grass on the prairie, eating to their little heart's content. But this winter, once snow covers the ground, getting to that grass is gonna be a whole lot harder. When that time comes, it's up to us to make sure that they're fed, especially as they will be pregnant and requiring more and more to help provide for them and their growing calves. It's this time of year that we shift gears a little bit and become more farmers than ranchers. There's a song from a local country star named Chris Ledoux called Dirt and Sweat Cowboy. And it's about this time of year. Now we don't have permission to play it, but the lyrics, I love this ranching with his roping and branding but I don't like that farming at all. So it's goodbye for summer. This haying sure is a bummer. And I'll be back to help you gather in the fall. Well, we can't split when it comes to haying. So the next best thing for us is to get to it and put it behind us. How do we know when to start haying? That can be a very tricky question, but you'd never know if you didn't get out and look at the hay fields. In our fields, we have a mixture between pasture grasses, including wheatgrass, needlegrass, and brome, along with alfalfa. Alfalfa is what gives a majority of the protein to our hay. The problem is that alfalfa and wheatgrasses are rarely ready to harvest at the same time. Normally, we'd harvest alfalfa when it is at about 10% flowering, but because the wheatgrass hasn't started to head out yet at that time, we'll wait on alfalfa and concentrate on the wheatgrass, which makes up a majority of our crop and the bulk of our hay. With the grass now headed out, we can head out and start on the first step of haying and get cutting. This year, we're gonna be cutting hay with a Rouse Double Nine Mower. The Double Nine Mower is made up of two nine foot sickle bars that take care of cutting the grass, making each swipe of the mower 18 feet. The mechanics of it are pretty simple, no computers, no crazy systems, just a PTO that powers a drive that moves the sickle back and forth between the guards that protect them from the rocks and other hazards. Of course, we need something to pull the mower with and to add power to it. For that, we'll be using our John Deere 6410 tractor. The mower utilizes PTO power and hydraulics from the tractor. The hydraulics control the lift of each sickle and the PTO puts power to the machine. Once we're all hooked up, then it's off to the field to get to work.
with the sickles down, there are a few daily requirements the mower needs. Mostly, grease. We grease the mower up at the beginning of the season, but some high wear and tear parts require daily greasing, and the biggest of these is the wobble drive. Forget to grease this, and you're gonna have a very short day, and probably one filled with a whole lot of dirty words. Under this cap is one little Zerk type grease fitting that'll make or break a haying season. It needs to be greased every day or every 10 hours of operation, whichever comes first. There's one for each sickle. And while we're at it, we're also gonna grease one more hard to get to and slightly annoying little fitting called the knife pin that holds the sickle to the drive. These are the high wear and tear parts of the mower. As we fire it up on very slow RPM, you will see what I mean. Power from the tractor travels down this shaft to and through the first sickle drive, then onto the back to a belt which drives each sickle back and forth. Keep in mind, this is only a few RPM. We're gonna be running the mower at 540 revolutions per minute in the field. Now, this is the only time that we'll operate the PTO while we're outside the tractor. And it's only to show you how it moves. Anytime we have to get out of the tractor, the PTO will be shut off along with the tractor. It's way too easy for accidents to happen. And I don't know about you, but I like my fingers. Some more than others. Once we're ready to go, there's still one very important part to run on the mower, and that's converting it from road mode to field mode. By pulling this one lever, we change the angle of the tires by only inches, but allow the back tires to swing out to the side and the sickles to run in tandem. The first sickle cutting the closer nine feet and the other following right behind. This field we're cutting today is also the field where we ran our irrigation experiment over the past month or so. Our goal was to see what kind of difference late season rain would make on our grass growth. Over the past month, we made sure this area received one inch of rain per week. And as you can tell, it didn't have much effect as compared to the rest of the grass. The only difference we see is that the watered area is slightly greener as rains have stopped over the rest of the field. What this tells me is that late season rain over the last month or so has little effect on the growth of the grass. And it's more than likely that early rain, the rain that falls in April and May, that rain dictates growth and the height that the grass grows. Next time we water earlier and maybe figure out a way to water more for a better sample. As we continue to cut our first round of the field, you'll keep the sickles towards the fence. As you can imagine, we really don't like driving over the hay that we haven't cut yet. And that's why our first round has cut as close as we want to get to the fence. Now we turn around and cut the other direction, driving on the grass we've already cut. Things do break, and quite often that breakdown comes from broken teeth on the sickle, and it's an easy fix. You'll notice a broken tooth because you'll start to miss cutting patches of grass. When that happens, it's time to stop, shut off the tractor, and get out and fix it. We start by removing the broken tooth, then we replace it. Two bolts hold on each tooth of the sickle, and once we replace the guard that was protecting it, again, another two bolts. And if you stay on top of the state of your guards and sickle teeth, your downtime will be a lot less than if you don't. Replacing one tooth takes minutes, while replacing an entire row can take you hours. With that fixed, we're back up and running, heading out in circles for hour upon hour. In fact, cutting at about six miles an hour, you'll average 11 acres per hour. This field is about 70 acres, so make sure you schedule at least seven hours to get it done but eventually you'll near the end. And those last few swipes of the mower will bring you great satisfaction until you remember this is just the first step.
there are two more steps to go, raking and baling. And although our time is up for today, we'll have plenty more coming up from the field. Eventually, we'll make a bale. But first, it'll be breakdowns and rebuilding, skin knuckles and probably a few dirty words. But we will get it done. Unlike Chris Ledoux's song, we aren't gonna take haying season off. And we don't have to wait until fall to see you again. We'll see you sooner than you think. Thanks for being here with us. Make sure you find us on Facebook and Instagram. And please, if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. We'd love to get to know you and your story. So comment as well and let us know you're here. We'll see you again on Tuesday. And until then, have a great week. And thanks for joining us in our Wyoming Life.